Dear friends, I know the weather is very bad today, but for me it's a beautiful day. Because it doesn't matter if it's Tibetan, East Turkestan, Mongolia, Taiwanese, Hong Kong, we all have the same enemy. And the Chinese Communist Party. We never forget what the Chinese Communist Party did for us. We will stand up against the Chinese Communist Party until the end. Who are we as humans if we allow this to continue? Who are we? What are we? But mass genocide is a good beginning. Dear friends, I know it's a difficult weather today, but we will never forget, right now, in this moment, we have millions of Uyghurs, Qatar, Tibet, on top of our tongue in China. We will never stop our action. My father, my people, who suffer every day. We want to let the Chinese government know we are united. We will fight until the end. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, it's amazing to see so many people out here and uh, you know what, what kind of important day it is and I want to welcome all of you, uh, especially the organizations that have organized this event including the Tibetan organizations, the, Mong uh, the Mongolian organizations, the Uyghurs of course, uh, the Hong Kong uh, organization and the Democratic Chinese organizations. So thank you for being here. Um, you have all known um, that this is the first time in a while that we're doing this kind of event because of all the corona uh, regulations. So I'm really glad that you all got out here. Uh, I want to make sure that we all follow the rules. So it's important that you all keep one and a half meters uh, of distance. Uh, what we want to do first is uh, we want to play the Uyghur uh, national anthem uh, and then the Tibetan national anthem. There will be prayers, Tibetan prayers, that's important, and then we'll go on to the speeches. Um, it may rain, and I hope you brought all uh, your raincoats out here, uh, but if it does, um, don't try to move uh, all at once, and I think the, the rest is uh, self-evident. So we'll play the national anthem right now.
like with the... Yes, the TV? Yeah, we can Okay, we can use them. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome on behalf of all of us. Today we are here, seven different groups representing different peoples, organizations, and the Chinese people, people in China. This is, I can say, that unprecedented, the seven peoples, groups, from Chinese democracy, Hong Kong, Taiwan, East Turkestan, Tibet, and South Mongolia. Today we are here for a very special reason. And it's quite inspiring, encouraging for all of us braving this weather, but we make sure whether it is five minutes or one hour, that today, the 70, 71st, the founding of People's Republic of China, and in that sense, the Communist Party. The slogan for today is a global day of action. Under the leadership of Tibet, International Tibet Network, around 200 groups, 19 cities in 36 countries, people worldwide are resisting, protesting against the Chinese Communist Party's policies in Tibet, East Turkestan, South Mongolia, in Hong Kong, and in China itself. It could not be more relevant than today that we are all here gathered to express our solidarity among ourselves, but also we would like to send a strong message to the worldwide that there are many millions of people who are also suffering under dictatorial regimes like People's Republic of China. Our second message is signal to the Xi Jinping and his leadership and the Communist Party. I know today we are here with our friends, Chinese Democracy Movement. As we have seen in 1989, what that year was for people of China. We are not against people of China. We are against the Communist Party, its reckless policies, and under the leadership of Xi Jinping. So we are here today to show in solidarity. At the same time, I would like to say to ourselves that there is a momentum, momentum worldwide, that people are sick and tired of dictatorial policies and regimes and leaders like Xi Jinping. We must seize this opportunity so that we are making some difference where we are from, where we come from. Each of these participating organizations, each one has its own respective specific issues and situations, and I do realize that. But we do have one common thing. How can we make sure that Xi Jinping, the Communist Party leadership, changes their policy, repressive policies in Tibet, in East Turkestan, in Hong Kong, and in Taiwan, South Mongolia. That is our main goal here today. So therefore, the slogan for this Global Day of Action says, Resist China's Communist Party. Freedom now. We are here to speak on behalf of our millions of brothers and sisters at home, who today, as we stand here, have no minute of freedom, democracy, and human rights. And therefore, although we may not be in thousands of numbers here today, 
but do re we do represent something very important, value, freedom, human dignity, and we are saying here to Xi Jinping, with all the thousands of our people who are glo globally today, everywhere they're standing up against the Communist Party and saying, enough is enough. Now with this, I would like to invite all of you, especially my brothers and sisters Tibetans, to join us to sing Tibetan national anthem. Thank you. Keep distance from each other, one and a half meter, please. 
You can go to the back a little bit more there, the right side, to the back a little bit more, please. I hope everyone will understand the situation, otherwise we can't continue our demonstration. So please, this side, friends, you can go off back side, and this side also, please move a little back. Cemaat, ben o anlattığı çok onun taşını sap olmaydık ya. Saçlar bile aran değişir, ben roksanın ağlı yok. Mahkul dedi, şunu amal da aa aklı iyi ilayla. Al bana çıktır, matrak bile matrak. I understand, but I hope really everyone can work each other. If you can go a little bit back side, to keep more distance, otherwise we can't continue our demonstration. Uh, we are not allowed to play music or any kind of sing, uh, singing right now because of the coronavirus is all restricted. Uh, and I would like to add someone from the Hong Kong to come and speak up here. I don't know who's going to speak. From Hong Kong, Hong Kong representative. Hello. Is there anyone from Hong Kong to speak here, please? The representative from Hong Kong. Would you like to take the mic, please? And of course today we will have a speech from all the representing organizations. So please hear Hong Kong. Okay, right now I want to welcome the Hong Kongese friends. together and um, I'm here on behalf of Netherlands for Hong Kong um, standing over there we're a group of uh, Dutch and international people um, and we're advocating for human rights and democracy in Hong Kong and um, you know having grown up in the city myself um, I have witnessed how the Chinese Communist Party tried to undermine Hong Kong's freedom year after year one policy after another and Hong Kongers have been trying to defend their autonomy against that for over three decades, similar to you guys. Um, but despite peaceful protests, the government only became more and more oppressive and unreasonable. So over the past year, from draconian laws to mass arrest and torture to police brutality and triad mobs, the government used every tactic to terrorize its own people. Over the past year, the world watched in shock as Hong Kong, formerly one of Asia's safest and freest cities, became the city of tear gas, gunfire, and blood. Today is the 1st of October, which means it is one year since the first time a protester was shot by a real bullet in Hong Kong. The 15-year-old was shot by a policeman, three inches from his heart, over less than a meter. So you guys are standing one and a half meters apart now, so imagine that. But not only that, because every protester in Hong Kong might face rioting charges, sometimes just for standing in the street. Today, actually, as of a few hours ago, more than 60 peaceful protesters dressed in plain clothes were stopped by the police and then immediately arrested. One of them is a friend of a friend of mine, and two are democratic politicians. Every day in Hong Kong, someone is arrested just because they are defenders of freedom and democracy. 
the values that the West is built on, what we all believe in. So I thank the Netherlands for giving all of us here a safe place to be, the right to assemble and to speak our minds. But I don't feel completely safe here because the Netherlands still has an extradition treaty with Hong Kong. I fear for the day that I am shipped to Hong Kong to face political charges. This is why, even here, I feel the need to hide my identity when doing activism. Another reason is because my family is stuck in Hong Kong. And I know the CCP will use them against me if they ever find out my name. I guess the Uyghur community here knows this better than me, since many of them are, have families in the camps in East Turkestan and are constantly intimidated by the CCP, even in the Netherlands. So we urge the, the Dutch government to suspend its extradition treaty with Hong Kong and grant Hong Kong refugees a lifeboat scheme like many other countries have done already after the new security law was imposed in Hong Kong back in July. We urge the government to restrict the political expansion of the CCP into the Netherlands, be it with intimidation, dubious technology or cultural education. We urge the government to defend democratic values worldwide and implement the EU Magnitsky Act into legislation as it has promised to do so as soon as possible. Because this is not just about Hong Kong. The frontline protesters on ground, they're not just defending the city from the police. They stand at the forefront of a global fight to defend democracy against the expanding dictatorship that is the Chinese Communist Party. So fight for freedom and stand with Hong Kong. Thank you all. Dear friends, I know the weather is very bad today, but for me it's a beautiful day because it doesn't matter if it's Tibetan, East Turkestan, Mongolia, Taiwanese, Hong Kong, we all have the same enemy. That is Chinese Communist Party. We never forget what the Chinese Communist Party did for us. We will stand up against the Chinese Communist Party until the end. Now we, we will welcome next friends. They, he will introduce themselves. Hello, hello. Hi everyone, I'm here on behalf of the International Movement Now, organizations behind the Friday of Freedom Movement for protests in front of the Chinese embassies all over the world. Sorry. This week, we've moved the Friday for Freedom to this Thursday. Because this Thursday is the Chinese National Day. Today, we are together with many other organizations to fight one common call. To call for the world's major democracies to resist the dictatorship that is the Chinese Communist Party. As the previous speaker mentioned, Hong Kong's freedoms have been attacked and exploited by the CCP for years now. And in the past 16 months, the situation has deteriorated dramatically. You might think that Hong Kong is becoming another Chinese city, where things will be centered, censored, but normal life goes on. But I'm afraid that, China, that Hong Kong will become another Xinjiang. After the Tibetan uprising and the Tiananmen Square massacre, I cannot imagine that the world actually believes in the one country, two party system. One country, two system principles set by the CCP. As I realized in this past year, this was a mistake. Yet, I've been taught that making mistakes 
is not an issue as long as you learn from them. And today, we all share what we have learned. Yeah, beloved, the true nature the of the CCP. Of the CCP. Yeah. Even if you don't have family in China, yeah, like many of us here do, you may think that it's far away. But take a look at the Amsterdam universities cooperating with the Chinese state company Huawei over the 5G. The Koninga universities collaborating with Chinese propaganda machines, the Confucius Institute, and the EU soon to sign the investment agreement with China. Yesterday, it was the Tibetans, Raiders, today, it's the Mongolians, the Hong Kongers, and tomorrow, it could be the Netherlands. Germany and Spain and all, everyone around the world. If, uh, if states like China, the Chinese Communist Party are left unchecked, democracy might become a thing of the past. Yet, no country alone has the economic or diplomatic leverage to oppose this dictatorship. That is why we need the world's democracies unite against the CCP. The reason why we are all here together. If two million Hong Kongers thought they couldn't do anything, then there wouldn't have been two million Hong Kongers marching in Hong Kong. It might not be easy, but it's necessary. To look beyond our differences and to unite for the common cause with Southern Mongolia, with Ukraine, with Belarus, and all all other efforts by authoritarian regimes. Only by creating a wave of freedom that crosses borders and continents, beliefs, can we safeguard our future. Thank you very much. Goedemiddag, lieve mensen. Ik kom uit Mongolië. En nou, waarom ben ik hier? Want Chinese regering heeft de Mongolse schrik verboden in binnen Mongolië. Dat is uh, mishandeld. Dat betekent mishandeling de kinderen. Het is eigenlijk mag niet. Helemaal mag niet. En, uh, de Chinese regering heeft ouders van de kinderen gevangenis genomen. Dat is ook mag niet. De Chinese regering mag niet de mensen recht uh, mishandelen. Het is overal in de, in de wereld. De man mag niet. Dus ik ben hier. Ik ben een beetje boos. Op de Chinese regering. Waarom de Chinese regering heeft de mensen, kinderen mishandeld? Mag niet de kinderen uh, schrift van oh, mijn god zijn schrift te leren? Waarom? Kinderen mogen alle uh, dingen leren. Bijvoorbeeld de schriften, talen. Waarom willen mijn god kinderen spreken niet in basisschool? En binnen Mongolië. Het is uh, heel slecht. Daarom ik ben ik hier. Wij moeten samenwerken tegen de Chinese regering. Als wij kunnen samenwerken, allemaal, dan wij kunnen wij een goede kant nemen. Goede kant komen. Als wij niks doen, de Chinese regering gaat de door de mensen mishandelen. 5.000, ongeveer 5.000 ouders in de gevangenis genomen. Dit is, mag niet. En vijf of zes mensen dood gegaan door de Chinese mishandeling. De Chinese rechter is de mishandeling van de mensenrechten. Dat is helemaal mag niet in onze wereld. Dat is helemaal mag niet. Vijf of zes mensen worden gegaan. Van de vijf mensen, twee kinderen. Twee kinderen sprongen uit de schoolraam. 
Het is een grote trauma. En de stop, Chinese rechteren, alsjeblieft. De stop maar de actie. Dat is verboden in onze wereld. De stop maar even, alsjeblieft. Dank je wel. So we are allowed to shout, but uh, don't lower your mask because yeah, you, you have to keep uh, and we have to keep distance. So yeah, look out for yourself, look out for each other. Fascist Chinese regime! Fascist Chinese regime! Fascist Chinese regime! Fascist Chinese regime! Dictator Chinese regime! Dictator Chinese regime! Dictator Chinese regime! Dictator Chinese regime! Stop the killing! Stop the killing! Stop the killing! Stop the killing! Stop the genocide! Stop the genocide! Stop the genocide! Stop the genocide! Thank you for being here. Um, it's a bit rainy, but that's fine. Um, I was asked to give a speech. And um, like every speech that I try to write, it's a bit painful because this is something that lays close to me. That's something that's important to me. And uh, I think it's important that we talk about it, but it's good to feel emotions. And uh, with our Tibetan and Hong Kongese friends at Dom Square, we talked about raising awareness and the importance of unity. Much time has passed. We have gone forward, but the path has also become more dangerous. Awareness is still an objective, but change, real change, is the imperative right now. We are united, as you can see today. We have gathered in an international environment with our friends and allies, the Tibetans, the Hong Kongese, as previously mentioned, but also our Chinese democratic friends, our Mongolian friends, and even our Falun Gong friends. And everyone who has come out today is our friends. The foundational aspect of this unity that we display today as activists, of course, is human rights, the inalienable right to freedom, independence, sovereignty, and self-determination. The right and principles that were proclaimed at the end of the Second World War and the end of the Holocaust, never again was our creed. The creed of hypocrisy. Speaking of human rights violations feels grossly inadequate. The human language is not designed to be able to communicate the brutalism and evil of, of this level. But mass genocide is a good beginning. Who are we as humans if we allow this to continue? Who are we? What are we? And what can we do? We should join every action that we can. Spare some time, donate. We should stop looking through an authoritarian regime and think of enlarging our wallets. We should start using our voices to speak up and speak, uh, speak our minds. We should use our money to even speak louder, Buy, boycott products from slave labor. It's a perverse, evil banality that Uyghurs are forced to fund their own genocide in every way possible. Google, Google Uyghur, find a trustworthy source, listen to the survivors, hear, hear and spread their voices. It's going to hurt if you do that. And I know it hurts, it hurts for me, it's draining but it's the least we can do. Find a better alternative for your products, 
than self-centered, amoral, disgusting, hypocritical companies like Nike, or Zara, or Apple, and 83 more at least. I am hurt, I won't lie. But it's nothing, nothing compared to the pain of my relatives, my father, my people, who suffer every day. The more I think, the less I think is necessary to say. The story is simple, everyone here knows it, but the solutions are not. We should think with our heads, but also with our hearts. Being effective, find solutions, but be compassionate as well. I'm really ha happy to have you here today, and I urge you and everyone who listens to start acting. Thank you very much. Tashi Derek, good afternoon. I am Tashi and I speak on behalf of the Tibetan community in the Netherlands. On this day in 1949, the communist Chinese government under the leadership of Mao Zedong, declared to annex Tibet in its entirety by launching an armed invasion through successive onslaught to the borders of the three provinces of Tibet. This resulted in hundreds of thousands of Tibetans being killed. Besides the invading, the Chinese made a plot which posed imminent dangers to the life of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. Therefore, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama was forced to go into exile in India in 1959 at the age of 24. While Tibet remains occupied under China, the communist government of China resorted to the distortion of Tibet's history and its sovereignty. Since then, we have witnessed innumerable misconduct, assault, no basic human rights, killing, detaining many political prisoners without having a chance of a fair trial, disappearances, cultural genocide, discriminating, and asserting Tibet's own identity, and the list goes on and on. Not forgetting the sacrifices of the Tibetan brothers and sisters inside Tibet who have self-immolated as it was the only way to tell the world about their suffering. The wave of self-immolations in Tibet began after the Chinese government cracked down on human rights following mostly widespread peaceful protests by Tibetans in 2008. While burning alive, they screamed for a free Tibet and restoration of human rights till their very last breath. As for our limited source of information, there are in total of 159, 55 self immolations in Tibet and China since 2009. On the contrary, the communist government of China vandalized and recklessly exploited Tibet's territory and its resources, thereby setting out to destroy the environment of the Tibetan plateau. The latest news being that China has forced 500,000 Tibetans into labor camps, mirroring a program in the Western Xinjiang region. The labor camps are accompanied by enforced indoctrination intrusive surveillance and harsh punishments for those who fail to meet labor transfer quotas, according to the research by the German anthropologist Dr. Adrian Zenz. All Tibetan people at diaspora and supporters continue their struggle from all over the world by cooperating with either other minorities whose people are also suffering under Chinese rule. 
For example, today we have seven different groups and we all are under one threat and that is Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese leadership should understand that it is impossible for the peaceful protest to come to an end as long as there is no just resolution of the issue of Tibet. I hereby raise my voice on behalf of six million Tibetans to resist the Chinese Communist Party's authoritarian regime towards freedom, democracy, and human rights. Your presence today spoke volumes. Thank you all for your support. Tukjiche, Tugyalo, Free Tibet. Independent for East Turkestan! Independent for East Turkestan! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Hong Kong! Independent for Hong Kong! No more CCP! No more CCP! No more CCP! No more CCP! Shame on CCP! Shame on CCP! Shame on CCP! I know it's a difficult weather today, but we will never forget right now, in this moment, we have millions of uh, Uyghurs, Kazakh, Tibet, Hong Kong are dying in China. We will never stop our action. This is only beginning. We want to let the Chinese government know we are united. We will fight until the end. Long life! Long life! Long life! Free Tibet! Tibet free! Out, out! Out, out! Long life! Long life! Break up, break up! Break up, break up! China, China, China. Long life. Long life. Back up, back up. Back up, back up. You and out. Back up, back up. You and out. Out, out, out.
Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have a very special someone next to me. Uh, in my speech, I spoke about someone who survived one of those brutal camps. Um, this is Ma'am Calvin Ursula. She uh, has been a short while here in the Netherlands and she escaped uh, to Europe in 2019. Um, she will tell her story and I hope you will listen. And um, it will be a bit gruesome, and, uh, but it is it's good that everybody knows. Um, she was a teacher in uh, East Turkestan and uh, eventually she found her way here to Europe to freedom. She went to those camps as a teacher and spoke to people who were there. So um, I will do, I will translate so you can all understand what she's saying. Uh, first of all, she wants to thank you for being here and all the Uyghurs who uh, are fighting for their country and for their people. Uh, in 2017, she was assigned to be a teacher in uh, one of the new concentration camps in, uh, in uh, East Turkestan. In the, in the camps, there are millions and millions of Uyghurs who are being starved, who are being beaten, who are being tortured, who are all depressed and made a bleak future. Uyghur women are being sterilized, being raped, assaulted. And all those things are happening to millions and millions and millions of Uyghurs right now in East Turkestan. And on this day, on October 1st, we are thinking of them. <laughs> Um, all those hor horrific things are happening to so many people on an everyday basis. And the, we, we don't have enough information of what's happening there. This is one of the few sources we have. The thing is, this voice should be heard over uh, everywhere on earth, everywhere to every person, because this is something that's so gruesome, so painful to so many people. It dehumanizes everyone, a, a person in every way you can think of. <laughs> So keep spreading the word, keep being, uh, being an activist, 
uh, do everything you can to try to, prevent, uh, to stop this genocide. So thank you for coming here. China, stop the killing! China, stop the killing! China, stop the genocide! China, stop the genocide! Fight for freedom stands with Hong Kong! Fight for freedom stands with Hong Kong! Fight for freedom! Fight for freedom! Stand with Hong Kong! Fight for freedom! Fight for freedom! Stand with Hong Kong! Stand with Hong Kong! Free me back! Free we won! Independent for East Turkistan! Independent for East Turkistan! Independent for East Turkistan! Independent for East Turkistan! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Tibet! Independent for Hong Kong! Independent for Hong Kong! We want freedom! We want freedom! We want freedom! We want freedom! No more CCP!
Brukhorin, Brukhor sich Mitzvah in Bergland wird bespioniert, bedrängt und verschantiert mit ernsthaften Gefolgen von den Familienleben in Ost-Turkistan. Wir reden, dass der Millionen Brukhorin versuchten, Hilfe zu machen, dass der Brukhorin Islamitin sein und dass er eine Kultur und Tradition haben. Wat
And I'm really encouraged to see that people who are being found here, despite this weather, which is not so friendly. But at the same time, for us, our mission is very clear. We are not against Chinese people, but we are against the Communist Party and Xi Jinping's reckless policies in Tibet. Xinjiang, East Turkestan, Southern Mongolia, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. Before I conclude this, from on behalf of Tibetans here today, this afternoon, the weather is not so friendly. At the same time, we feel that I, our message has been clear what we wanted to express to the Chinese Communist Party, and I'm sure that they have heard us. As much as our friends, brothers, is all over the world. So I would like to say that we, Tibetan community, I just discussed with the, with the chairman of the Tibetan community and Tibet Sport Group. Slowly but gradually, we would like to withdraw now of this, and I hope that our other friends do not feel that we are not in solidarity with you. We feel it is time for us now, because of the weather like this, and for our security and health, we have to be very careful, because we need our health, we need our happiness, we need everything, we must be strong, so we don't want to become sick, which is also very important. So I'm very grateful for all of you coming here this afternoon, and joining us despite this very poor weather. I would like to say to you, your friends from East Turkestan, Southern Mongolia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, FDC, democracy in China, that Tibetan people are with you, has always been, and I believe, like I said in the beginning, that we have a momentum. This is the moment that we have to seize, and I think there will be freedom in all where we come from. One thing I would like to stress here, the situation in Tibet, 60 years, nobody has actually been able to go to Tibet as they wanted to investigate the situation in Tibet. But one week ago, as a friend Tashi Jamala said in her speech, two years ago, the world was shocked with the situation in Uyghur, East Turkestan, with a million people in the labor camp. One week ago, in Tibet, half a million Tibetans are being sent to military camp, forced labor camp. This is a situation that we are very concerned, and I hope that with you, in solidarity, that in the coming time, months, that we'll be able to make sure that end of 2020, that leadership in Beijing will realize that they cannot continue the policies they have in Turkestan, Tibet, in the Southern Mongolia, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh,
Ouais, c'est toi. Ah,